Hello dear students, hope you all are doing well and good. Uh, I hope that you all have gone through the syllabus of economics for the season 2020-21 as it has been already published by CBSC. So I expect you all must have seen the syllabus. First of all, before discussing about the syllabus, uh, I like to tell you all that we will. Uh, there are two parts in our syllabus for class 12. That is macroeconomics and Indian economic development. So we will first start with the macroeconomic portion, macroeconomics portion. And in macroeconomics, as you have gone through the syllabus, you must have found that there are basically five units and. Uh, there are three units which comprises of six marks each and uh, today we will begin with one of such unit that is money and banking and in money and banking there are two chapters but it comprises of only one unit and which will be of six marks so <coughs> we will first start with uh, money chapter okay and then we will proceed on to banking chapters so without making much delay i would like to start with the first chapter or oh, the chapter money okay uh, <clears throat> before discussing about money we need to know about and the economy in which money was not in existence so how the people used to exchange how the people used to transact goods or services before the advent of money or before the existence of money that we will try to know about it in our very first lesson so the heading for today is pre-monetary economy and pre-monetary economy means the economy in which money was not in existence or money was yet to be discovered okay so before the existence of monetary system as you all see before the existence of monetary system barter system used to prevail okay and what do you mean by barter system barter system is a system in which barter system is a system in which a good or service is exchanged with any other goods or services now <coughs> here we have to understand that in barter system good or service is exchanged with any other goods or services what does this mean let us take an take a very simple example of this let's say in barter system what used to happen was for example say if a person say person a is having a good let's say potatoes with him then he will have to find someone who wants to take his potatoes and give the onions which he is willing to exchange with okay so in case of barter system what used to happen was goods were exchanged against goods. let's say potatoes were exchanged against onions or onions were exchanged against let's say <coughs> a haircut etc okay so there was no common medium of exchange in case of barter system people used to exchange goods according to their needs and they used to exchange one goods with another but there were certain limitations of this system that is barter system so we will discuss about those limitations of barter system before going into the monetary economy okay so what were the limitations of barter system the very first limitations of barter system is that there was no common medium of exchange so the problem of double coincidence of wants used to arise okay so what do we mean by no common medium of exchange no common medium of exchange means if we compare barter system with the monetary system which is prevailing right now we see that <coughs> in barter system let's say a person named Ram okay, is growing potatoes 
and he wants to exchange potatoes with onions okay and let's say Shyam is growing onions but he doesn't want to exchange his onions with the potatoes which is being offered by Ram then the exchange did not used to take place in barter system okay this very problem is known as the problem of double coincidence of ones double coincidence of ones means a person who is willing to offer his goods or services to another person then that other person should also be willing to exchange his goods or services with the goods being provided by the first person here Sam does not agree with what Ram is offering so the exchange could not take place now if we compare it with the economy which is prevailing right now that is the monetary economy then we clearly find that if Ram wants to purchase anything what he will do is he will simply sell potatoes in the market against some money here money may be in the form of any currency in case of India it will be rupees in case of Bangladesh it will be Taka in case of uh, USA it will be US dollar in case of <coughs> England it will be pound so on and so forth okay so what happens is Ram will sell his potatoes okay in the market against some money offered to him and then Sam uh, Ram will use that money to purchase anything which he wants so the very problem of double coincidence of ones has been easily solved in the monetary economy now we will move on to the next limitations of barter system that is there was problem of common unit of account what does this mean the common unit of account or the unit of account now for this also we have to take one simple example uh, I'll take an example of three people and three products okay let's say there are three person in the economy okay or in the market uh, namely Ram, Shyam which we have already considered Ram, Shyam and Gopal let's say ok now Ram is offering or Ram is growing potatoes and offering potatoes for exchange ok Shyam is growing onions and offering it for exchange and finally Gopal <coughs> is producing rice and offering it for exchange ok now let's say Ram and Sam came into agreement okay, for exchanging their products and the exchange rate was such that 1 kilogram of potatoes offered by Ram is equivalent to 1 kilogram of onions offered by Sam. Okay, fine this was the first agreement for exchange. Now again Sam was ready to exchange his product that is onions with Gopal okay, who was offering rice for exchange okay so these two Sam and Gopal also get into agreement and then they decided that Sam will provide or uh, will offer one kilogram of onions against one kilogram of rice offered by <coughs> Gopal okay here also the exchange rate is 1 kilogram equals 1 kilogram in first case also the exchange between Ram and Sam also the exchange rate was 1 kilogram of potatoes equals to 1 kilogram of onions now you must be thinking that if Ram and Gopal wants to exchange their products with each other okay that is if Ram wants to exchange potatoes with the rice being offered by Gopal then what will be the exchange rate okay now the problem of barter system exists here in barter system the exchange rate was decided upon the needs of the person who were ready to exchange now let's say when Ram and Gopal wants to exchange their product with each other Ram is willing to offer one kilogram of potatoes against one kilogram of rice provided by Gopal but Gopal is not ready to exchange okay Gopal wants Ram to offer two kilograms of potatoes against the one kilogram of rice offered by Gopal 
okay why is it so it is so because gopal is not that much in need of potatoes he is not desperately wanting potatoes on the other hand <coughs> ram is in desperate need of rice so he will happily agree to offer 2 kilograms of potatoes against 1 kilogram of rice offered by gopal now if we compare this third case with the previous two cases we will see that in the same market there are two exchange rates prevailing that is in the first and second case if we draw a conclusion then we can easily say that 1 kg of potatoes would have been exchanged with 1 kg of rice but in reality it did not happen because gopal was not ready to exchange 1 kg of rice against 1 kg of potatoes so what finally happened in third case is that the exchange rate was 2 kg of potatoes equals to 1 kg of rice so in the same market we see that there are two units of measurement 1 kg equals 1 kg and 2 kg equals to 1 kg okay so this was the main problem with barter system okay the two exchange rates or the two unit of measurement were there okay or more than one unit of measurement used to prevail so how is this problem solved in monetary system now in monetary system we easily see that if someone has 20 rupees in his pocket and the market rates are such that 1 kg of rice equals to 20 rupees 1 kg of potatoes is 20 rupees and 1 kg of onions is 20 rupees then that particular person can either buy 1 kg of any of the product or what he can do is he can purchase half half kilogram of either onions or potatoes or onions or rice or potatoes or rice okay so this is how the problem common unit of account is solved in case of monetary system in case of monetary system that common unit becomes money itself okay so wherever you go in the market the money is readily acceptable and we base the value everywhere we try to base the value in terms of money itself okay we see that all the goods are priced in terms of money nowadays okay so there is no exchange rate nowadays in terms of one product with another product so this is how the problem of common unit of account was solved in case of monetary economy now we will move on to the next limitation of barter system that is storage of value or storing the value okay the second <coughs> third limitation of barter system is storing the value of a product or service for this also we will take one example uh, let's say <clears throat> a person who is a jeweler okay who produces or manufactures gold uh, rings or say gold necklaces and all and there is a person who produces tomatoes okay now tomatoes cannot be stored for a long period of time okay and on the other hand gold can be stored for a very long period of time okay now what happens here is one is having advantage one particular producer who produces <coughs> durable goods who produces those goods which does not perish in a very short period of time okay has the advantage in the barter system because he can store his value but on the other hand a farmer who can who is producing tomatoes which cannot be stored because it is a perishable product then they cannot store their value because at that time products itself were the value but nowadays in case of monetary system what we see is that particular person who is producing tomatoes can sell the tomatoes okay and whatever money he gets okay whatever fortune he gets he can easily deposit it or save it in his bank account and save it for as long period of time as he wants so the store of value is now possible in case of <coughs> monetary system which was not possible in case of barter system okay this is how monetary system 
overcomes the problem of storing the value okay so there was problem of storing the value in case of barter system okay, because some goods which were perishable could not be stored but in case of monetary system what they can do is they can sell their product and keep the money in safely in the bank or with themselves also okay but they can easily store the value nowadays okay and the very last limitation of barter system is problems in making deferred <coughs> problems in making deferred payments deferred payment payments means future payments okay for this also we will have to take one example uh, let's say there is a marriage function or there is a wedding ceremony at the place of ram okay now ram who is producing potatoes okay so obviously what do we have in our culture is that we need to feed we need to organize a feast okay celebrating the marriage okay so while providing the feast we need many uh, we need the products in large volume isn't it so what happens here is ram will be requiring more rice also than what he usually requires so but ram is not producing rice so what ram will do is ram will uh, talk with gopal okay, who is producing rice and offering rice for exchange and he will talk with gopal and come into agreement the agreement is such that ram is willing to offer <coughs> say for exchange 50 kg of potatoes against 50 kg of rice provided by gopal okay and ram has further promised gopal that he will be giving 10 kilograms of potatoes in extra as an interest to gopal okay now they have come into agreement gopal agreed with ram and he offered 50 kilogram of rice to go uh, ram against the 60 kilograms of potatoes that is 50 kilograms plus 10 kilograms extra let's say it's an interest okay fine <coughs> and they came into agreement and happily ram accepted the agreement and ram brought 50 kilograms of rice to his home and organized the feast very nicely and ram had promised gopal that he will be repay repaying his loan that is in the form of product after one year now let's move on to the next year next year after one year though ram is willing to offer 60 kilograms of potatoes to gopal but what will gopal do with those 60 kilograms of potatoes because there is no such feast at his home so what will he do with this 60 kilograms of potato so he may ask ram to repay him in some other forms so here the problem arises okay they used to be very <coughs> they used to be a huge problem in case of barter system as the future payments were concerned okay one may agree right now regarding the exchange rate in future but in future that particular person may not be <clears throat> in need of those products so he may refuse to accept those product but if we compare that in with monetary system in monetary system what happens everything is expressed in terms of money now let's say there is a marriage function at the place of ram in monetary system and ram is in need of money okay because a huge amount of money is spent in wedding uh, <coughs> ceremony or marriage ceremony so what happens here is ram is looking for money and ram finally convinces gopal to give him or to lend him 10000 rupees okay and he has agreed with gopal that he will be repaying his loan or he will be repaying his debt 
within one year and he will be giving 10% uh, interest on 10,000 rupees that is he will be giving 1,000 rupees extra after one year okay finally he will be giving 11,000 rupees after a year's time period okay now here what happens is after one year after one year Gopal will happily accept the money because it is easier to make future payment in terms of money so nowadays we see that taking and giving loans has become much easier which was not the case if we this uh, it was not the case in case uh, it was not the case in case of <coughs> barter system so this were the limitations of barter system and as a result of this uh, people were constantly looking for some other medium of exchange some other forms of exchange and finally we reached into the monetary system and money came into existence okay so these were the limitations of barter system and we have discussed about the pre-monetary economy basically the barter system today okay hope you all have understood the limitations of barter system and what were the problems in barter system and why there was the need for money so we will discuss about money in our next lecture till then stay safe stay home thank you very much thank you